Hello everyone, welcome to Viola Help. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a, a REST web service in Spring Boot. And with the help of Spring Boot, it's very easy to create a service with uh, minimal to no configuration. Now, uh, so this is how a typical REST workflow looks like. So on the left hand side, you have a client component. It can be anything, any JavaScript framework or a mobile application or anything. Now, uh, what client does is that uh, it will send a request to the respective endpoint. So in our case, it's a local host slash product. And the request type can be a get request or post request uh, or even put and delete. Now, uh, along with the request type, it will send the actual uh, content, uh, which is in JSON format or XML format. Now, on the server side, what we're going to do is that we're going to take the input and we're going to do some uh, business logics and we're going to send back the information using JSON or XML and along with the status code. So this is how a typical uh, REST API workflow looks like. Now, uh, before actually diving into the implementation, uh, I want to show you what are the steps involved in implementation. Now, uh, so the first thing is obviously we have to do a project setup. Now, the good thing is that if you already have a Spring Web projects, it's good to go. You don't need to do any uh, another configuration to do a REST API. If you don't know how to do a Spring Web setup, I have provided a link in the description. You can check that playlist. I have clearly explained how to do uh, set up using Spring Boot and Maven. Now the second thing is that uh, we're going to design our endpoints, uh, RESTful endpoints. We're going to create a REST controller and we're going to map all the endpoints to the respective methods. And uh, we're going to implement our APIs using respective services. And the last thing is that we're going to test our APIs using a Postman client. And if you don't have a Postman client, you can download in the internet. It's a very handy tool to test your uh, APIs. So that's all about steps involved. Now I'm going to go to my APIs. So here I have three APIs. And the first thing is a products API. What it does is that it will return all the products available in our repository. And I have a second API. What it does is that it's going to take an input ID as product ID from the client and it will return the respective product information for the given product ID. Now at last we have a put request and what it does is that it's going to take in product information from the client and we're going to add the product into our repositories. So these are the three APIs. Now in this tutorial I'm going to focus mainly on get request and in my next video I'm going to check upon a put request. Now let's get into implementation part. So this is my Eclipse project setup. Uh, here there are so many packages. You don't need to worry about all those things. Now, the uh, thing is that we have a product Pojo class uh, which has the information related to product. So which has ID, name, description, price, seller and etc. Now uh, I have another implementation which is a product service implementation. So this does all the business logics for me like uh, get all products information, uh, getting a product by particular ID and adding a product and etc. Now uh, so this is my a controller and if you're not sure about what is a controller and what is a spring component uh, you can refer my video link in the description where I have clearly explained what is a spring controller and spring component and uh, pretty much anything related to a spring. Now uh, so now, as usual, I'm going to unnote uh, this class as a REST controller. Now, if you are wondering what is the difference between a controller and a REST controller, now uh, the difference is that whenever you specify a component as a controller, uh, let's say for example, uh, if you go to my web component, so this is my web controller. Now, what we would return is that generally we would return a view uh, and along with the model data. So that's how the implementation of Spring Web works where you would return information, uh, view information and view would render your data. Now that's not the case with uh, Spring. Now with the Spring what you do is that you just return an XML content or JSON data. You don't need to worry about view uh, and all those stuff. You just need to respond your data. That's the basic difference between a REST controller and a normal, normal um, 
controller now what we are doing is that we are actually implementing our first API which is a slash products which returns all the product information so on which is a get request type now I'm gonna create a method for that public so it should return all our product information and I'm gonna name this method as get all products now as I said I'll be using my uh, product service implementation to do my business logics so I'm gonna create a field for that product service and I'm gonna auto wire this one So all right, here we have uh, our service. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm simply going to call my service and I'm going to ask for all the products information. So that's it. Now the thing is that uh, we have to map our method to the endpoint, uh, which is nothing but uh, slash products. And uh, remember, it's a get request. So I'm going to map to get mapping annotation. Now when I say get mapping, it will handle only HTTP GET request and um, here you can specify your uh, URI so which is nothing but products even so whenever client calls uh, something like localhost slash products uh, it's gonna land here that's pretty much you have to do to implement a rest web service now if you notice clearly I haven't even converted my data or a HTTP content to XML or JSON so that's because uh, Spring Boot it will automatically convert my data to XML or JSON so I don't have to you know externally convert my data to JSON so that's the beauty of Spring uh, so if you're wondering how Spring does that it's gonna scan all your jars and here as you can see I have Jackson jars so Spring will use this Jackson libraries to convert my data to JSON in case if you have XML related jars it's gonna send data in XML now since I have J Jackson jars Spring will uh, intelligently identify this jars and it will convert my data to JSON automatically now let me run this one and let me show you how it works okay now I'm gonna go to my uh, Postman client so if you are new to this interface uh, so this is where you specify your HTTP request type and uh, this is where you specify your URL and the response will be available here now uh, I'm gonna type my uh, resource identifier URL I'm gonna say localhost uh, I think my port is 9090 let me check uh, 9090 slash and at last my uh, mapping which is nothing but products so let me see what happens when I send a HTTP request right so as you can see it returns a JSON uh, data which is very cool which is what exactly we need and if you're wondering what is this data and if you go to my get all products so these are the list of products available so uh, spring automatically converted this list into a beautiful XML sorry JSON content so that's how you do a get request now uh, the next thing quickly what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna quickly uh, implement my second API and as I said what it does is that it's gonna take input as ID and it's gonna return product information now if you notice clearly this ID is a dynamic input for me so meaning a request can be something like product slash one two three or it can be product slash one two four it can be any stuff so we have to take this uh, ID as an input and we have to uh, send respective information now I'm gonna show you how to do that in spring so what we're going to do is that we're going to create an another method and in this case we're just returning our product information single product and I'm going to say get product by ID all right now as usual I'm going to call my service layer and I'm going to ask for but the thing is I have to take input product ID now I'm going to call my product service layer and I'm gonna ask for get product by ID for the given product ID all right and as I said it's a get request so I'm gonna map to get mapping 
and I'm gonna say something like product but remember it's a dynamic URL so you have to specify something like this ID now the next thing is that uh, we should take this input and we should map to this uh, respective product ID so in, in order to do that what we're gonna do is we're gonna use another annotation path variable and I'm gonna bind this to ID now what happens is that spring will take this input ID from the URL and it will inject to my uh, method parameter so that's uh, pretty good now let me show you what happens when we run this one so here uh, URI is product slash now if you remember my IDs are uh, 1 2 3 1 2 4 1 2 5 so I'm gonna try with 1 2 5 here send a request yep it returned specific product information which is great now uh, I'm gonna try for 1 2 4 which is still great uh, so I'm not sure whether you can see the request or response now the thing is that let me try with some junk input and uh, let's see what happens all right so this is what we are expecting uh, the content is null everything seems to be okay but if you see the status uh, it's saying uh, 200 okay but as per the design principles it's always uh, better to send a specific HTTP status code to the client now in this case uh, since our content is not available it makes sense to send a status as 404 or something like that now I'm gonna show you how to manipulate our HTTP status code here now I'm gonna go back to my Eclipse now uh, this is where the thing uh, gets tricky now what you have to do is that you have to wrap your entire data in a specific class called uh, response entity now instead of sending a product information we are wrapping the product information inside an another class called uh, response entity uh, we have to check for null here so I'm gonna I'm gonna say product product equals so in case if my product is null or if the product is not available in our repository we're gonna send a status code as 404 so the way we do is that we're gonna say return new uh, response entity as a parameter we have to pass two information the first thing is our product or the actual HTTP content and uh, we can say our status code so HTTP status not found so there are so many status code available you can uh, send the respect to uh, status code now uh, I'm gonna do the same thing for our successful scenario so instead of sending not okay I'm gonna send okay now the thing is that since our product is already null we don't even have to worry about sending back so we can just uh, skip that one so that's pretty much how you send a HTTP uh, status code I know it's very complex and tricky just to send one status code we have to manipulate all these informations uh, I think in our uh, next versions maybe spring will provide an easy way to implement uh, status codes now uh, let me check now let me run this one and see what happens uh, I'm gonna send the same request again but as you can see the content is still null but if you notice here the status is saying as a uh, 404 not found now let me try for a positive scenario one two three all right you got your data and for a negative scenario you should get your 404 so all right that's uh, pretty much it about get <laughs> request guys in my next video i'm going to show you how to do a post mapping and i'm going to show you how to send uh, and JSON data as an input from the client and I'm going to show you how to take the JSON input and how to process post mapping so thanks for viewing guys if you like this video don't forget to subscribe us and if you have any questions uh, you can uh, ask in the comment section thanks again